Advanced Studio Classroom is on the air. Join us today as we revisit the miracle on the Hudson. Hello, everyone. You are listening to Advanced Studio Classroom. My name is Brandon. Today is August twenty second. We begin our psychology article, and、uh, this particular article is entitled "Miracle on the Hudson Revisited." And here, helping me discuss this topic first, we welcome Manya. Welcome back to the program, Manya. Thank you, Brandon. I'm really excited to be here today. You're really excited, not just excited.、Really、why excited. you must really like this topic? Well, because I remember it. I remember it when it first happened. Wow,、That's、all right. That's why I'm excited. <laughs> That's right.、Our、history is wasn't that long ago, but ten、mm-hmm. years ago, a little over ten、yes. years ago. So we do remember this, and we also have Josh here in the studio. Welcome back, Josh. Thank you, Brandon. As always, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, Josh, do you remember this incident? I do remember this incident, although I was living in Costa Rica at the time, so、mm. I didn't quite get as much like instant coverage. I don't think as a lot of Americans did. Yeah, I don't think I actually really remember. Maybe faintly. It's hard because I have seen the movie a couple、mm-hmm. of times, and I know the story well, but I can't remember if I. I'm remembering when it actually happened, or just you know thoughts from the movie or something. You know, sometimes you get your thoughts you mixed mix up. It up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but the movie, nonetheless, is excellent. We can talk、mm-hmm. more about that as we get into the article. I remember it very well because Captain Sully, who we will talk about, he、uh, lived in the town very close to where I was living at the time,、oh, and so there was a lot of coverage.、Right. Yeah. So it's. Still fresh in my memory. Yeah, and I believe at this point, yeah, I think I was still here in Asia, so I was kind of a bit removed from this. But anyway, it was an amazing story, and we are revisiting it here in our article. It was just more than ten years ago、uh, when this happened. Before we dig deeper into this topic, I want to talk about airplane travel in general. Maybe some of you listeners have had some. Issues when you've been flying, and maybe some scary situations. Hopefully not. But I want to ask our panelists if they've ever been in any such situations, or maybe just in a situation where it was just really big problem that came up and it changed your schedule. I mean, I'm not talking about just a short delay, but some big problem. First, Manya, have you ever been in a scary situation on a flight? I have. I was on a flight once. From、um, the west coast of the United States to the Midwest, which is supposed to be about a four-hour、uh, trip, but、um, when we were almost at our destination, the pilot says we're running out of fuel,、mm. uh, so we might have to land somewhere else, which is really disappointing and.、Um, Annoying, but mostly a little bit scary、mm-hmm. to hear the pilot say, "We're running out of gas. This、mm-hmm. plane could just fall out of the sky."、Yeah. Thankfully, that didn't happen, <laughs> and we made it. But for a、yeah. moment there, I was a little bit scared. Sure. All right. How about you, Josh? Any scary situations? Well, it's scary, not so much. I've been fortunate in all of the trips that I've done that the the airplanes have been you know in good repair and nothing、mm. really bad has happened. I've been stranded before in an airport, which was、uh, a long, <clears throat> drawn-out、um, story, and that was a little bit different. But、uh, probably the mo- the scariest has been really, really bad turbulence.、Mm-hmm. So that's when you're flying along the airplane, and all of a sudden it feels like you're dropping out of the sky because you've hit turbulence. I've been in a couple of situations where that's been really bad. Yeah, that's scary. I mean. Never know how bad is it going to be, right? It's kind of like when an earthquake happens. You're like, is this the big one? You don't really know until、mm-hmm. maybe the effort's over. And、uh, so one time, several years ago, I was in the U.S. I had not a super long flight, but there were thunderstorms in the area, and so I think what they were doing was kind of circling around, just trying to waiting for the storm to pass. And apparently, the flight attendants and pilots they couldn't fly any longer. I think they have pretty strict rules on how long they can fly. Or whatever, and so we had to land in some other city, and they had to get us a hotel. I think they paid for it at least, and had to stay there. And it didn't put me out much. I just 
couldn't go to work the next day or mm-hmm. something, which I wasn't really that upset about. I was <laughs> working a coffee shop at the time, and it was fine. I could take an extra day. But nonetheless, that was something I'd, I have never encountered since and uh, kind of a strange incident. But thank God we landed. <laughs> I've had a really similar situation where Uh I was almost at my destination, but there Mm -hmm. was a huge storm. Mm -hmm. And I took out my compass and then just watched us go in circles because we couldn't land. Wait, you took out your compass. You had a compass with you. Yes, I I had a compass and I was just looking at it and we were just going in circles. All right. And then finally we landed. If you're lost, go with Manya. She has a compass. (laughs) Good to know. All right. So... Hopefully you've never been in a scary situation, but if you have been, you want to have a pilot, hopefully like the pilot that we're talking about today, who in just a quick moment made the right decisions, even though maybe they didn't seem right to other people at the time. Well, we are on page 34, so if you have your magazine or your digital device, follow along with us as we have our first reading. Miracle on the Hudson Revisited How a Pilot and His Crew Used Emotional Intelligence to Save Over 100 Lives More than 10 years ago, Captain Chesley Sully Sullenberger and First Officer Jeffrey Skiles successfully guided a U.S. Airways jet to an emergency landing in the icy Hudson River after a bird strike crippled both engines shortly after taking off. What follows is an excerpt from my book, EQ Applied, The Real World Guide to Emotional Intelligence, detailing the amazing story of what happened in the harrowing 208 seconds that followed impact, and the role emotional intelligence played in those critical moments. All right, so our deck says how a pilot and his crew used emotional intelligence to save over 100 lives. And so they're talking about the 100 lives or more than 100 lives of the people on the plane, the United flight that we are, our U.S. Airways flight rather, that uh, we are discussing today. So we learn here that this happened more than 10 years ago. So we're reflecting back on this miracle that happened more than 10 years ago in the city of New York. And you, Manya, said you lived close to this area back at this point, right? No. Okay. No. Captain Sully uh, lived in California, but the day he was piloting that plane, he was in New York. Right. Okay. So he's from a city near where you live. Yes, in California. Okay. Thanks for clarifying that. All right. Anyway, he was in New York, of course, flying. That's where this happened. And uh, his name is Captain Chesley Sully Sullenberger. What a nice name. Yes. I I love his name. And then we also meet First Officer Jeffrey Skiles. What is a first officer, Josh? Well, here for the airplane, first officer is another way of saying uh, cold pilot. Mm, yeah, normally we just say co-pilot. Mm-hmm. But here we can also call them first officers. And they successfully guided a U.S. Airways jet to an emergency landing. And we get a description of where that was. It was the Hudson River, but it must have been winter time, right? Because it says it's icy. It was icy. Yes, this happened in January. And that time of the year in New York, it's usually pretty cold, Mm -hmm. sometimes snowing. Of course. Yeah, very cold in New York. And so why did they have to land in a river, Josh? Well, that's a really good question. And it's because there was a bird strike which crippled Mm -hmm. both engines. So when the engines are crippled, it means that they can't work anymore. And a bird strike means literally that birds ran into the engines and damaged them mid-flight. Yeah, and this is a thing. I mean, that's why we have the term marked. You can look it up in the dictionary. This actually happens, right, With especially with planes. Um, I think it's, is it JFK in New York that um, flying out of there? I think this may be, there's a problem there with birds. Um, but A lot of Canada geese yeah. are there. Okay. Yes, and it crippled both engines, which is a huge deal. Yeah, and so I think this is, Uh, Of course, highly unusual for both engines to be crippled as a result of a bird strike, but that's what happened here. Yeah, and for people who aren't familiar with Canadian geese, 
uh, they are really big birds, mm -hmm. like very, very, very big. So way bigger than a chicken. And they do fly in groups. Mm -hmm. So um, and they migrate back and forth um, north to south. So there was a, a whole group of these Canadian geese that were flying and mm -hmm. ran into both the engines at the same time. Yeah, that makes more sense with that description is why there were so many of them. And so they just took off, right? And they had this bird strike. And, you know, images of the movie are coming back when I see this because they uh, show this in, in detail. I mean, I don't think they show the bird, birds striking it, but they, they show what's going on and inside the cockpit and so forth. And so if you haven't seen that, I encourage you to do so because it really spells this out wonderfully. Well... They wrote a book here, and uh, they're talking about EQ. And so what follows is an excerpt from my book. And so the writer of this book is the writer of this article, Justin Burizo. And it's called EQ Apply, The Real World Guide to Emotional Intelligence. So today we're going to talk a lot about emotional intelligence. This word EQ, it stands for emotional uh, quotient. And it's intelligence regarding the emotions, especially the ability to monitor one's own uh, emotions. Now, EQ, of course, is also, we think of IQ. This, there's a way of measuring your EQ. Yeah, so IQ would be the intelligence quotient. So when people are measured by how intelligent they are, usually they will take a test mm. that will sort of give them a score. Um, so most people think that an IQ score over... 120 is pretty smart, and under 100 is not so smart. So um, here we're not talking about intelligence, though. We're talking about emotional intelligence. All right, so what is emotional intelligence? It's the capacity to be aware of, control, and express your emotions. And also, it, it has to do with interpersonal relationships. You, you treat people with care, and you're thoughtful, and you have empathy. And so we'll get more into what emotional intelligence is as we go through the article. But this book, it details the amazing story of what happened in the harrowing 208 seconds. Um, what is meant by that word there, Manya? Harrowing. Harrowing, yes. means extremely upsetting, just mm -hmm. awful. Yeah, they describe it as harrowing 208 seconds. And so, you know, 208 seconds is that long. But, Josh, when you're in this kind of situation, it probably seems like an eternity, right? Right. So I have certainly had this happen to me, but whenever you're in a really dangerous situation or something that's very harrowing, mm. time somehow seems to slow down. So what normally only takes uh, maybe a minute or two seems like it takes a really long time. Right. And so how did emotional intelligence play a part in all this? That's an interesting study. Now, we've looked at this, you know, before. We, we've heard the story, but we're looking more into the thought process behind it so we can draw and, and we can learn from it as well. Maybe we will face some experience that we only have a few moments to d make a decision, but we can draw on our past experience and we can learn how to harness our emotions. And that's part of being emotionally intelligent. So we are going to look back first at what occurred. As we go to our second reading, we'll look back on what happened on January 15th, 2009. A look back at what occurred. On January 15th, 2009, U.S. Airways Flight 1549 began its route from New York City to Charlotte, North Carolina. For Captain Sullenberger, it was just another routine flight one of thousands he had flown over a career that spanned decades. But just before the plane had risen to 3,000 feet, Sullenberger and his first officer, Jeff Skiles, noticed a flock of geese flying directly at them. In less than a second, the birds collided with the airplane, severely damaging both engines. As the birds hit the plane, it felt like we were being pelted by heavy rain or hail says Sullenberger. It sounded like the worst thunderstorm I had ever heard. Realizing that we were without engines, I knew that this was the worst aviation challenge I'd ever faced. It was the most sickening, pit of your stomach, falling through the floor feeling I had ever experienced. 
All right, so back in 2009, this U.S. Airways Flight 1549, it began its uh, route from New York City to Charlotte, North Carolina. So those are both in the eastern half of the United States. One, New York City's in the north, Charlotte, North Carolina, that's in the southeast. All right, so it was just another routine flight, right? Captain Sullenberger, Manya, he had been doing this for a while. For many, many years. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. So it was a routine flight, one of thousands he had flown over a career that spanned decades. Now, Josh, if we say something spans something, what what are we saying? So when something spans something, it stretches across an area or, in this case, a period of time. So saying that his career spanned decades means that he's been flying or his career has been in flying for uh, a few decades, which means over 20 years. All right. And so they take off, Manya, and just as they get up to, what, around 3,000 feet, something happens. His co-pilot, Sully's co-pilot, Jeff Skiles, he noticed a flock of geese flying directly at them. All right. Yeah, that's pretty awful. Imagine seeing (laughs) that, right? You're in the cockpit and... These geese are flying at you now. Maybe they had seen this before. I mean, Captain Sully, he had been flying for many years, and so maybe he had seen, I'm sure, birds and geese. So maybe didn't, uh, but maybe didn't think too much about it. But if you see a lot of them at once, Mm -hmm. that's going to be pretty scary, right? And like Josh said, um, Canada geese, their wings are very, very long. So, Mm -hmm. you know, when something so big is coming into the airplane. Yeah. It's and do the damage. two scariest things you can really run into when flying an airplane are lightning strikes and mm. birds, because mm-hmm. either mm-hmm. one of them are very unpredictable and it can do a lot of damage to a plane very quickly. That's right. All right. So in less than a second, the birds collided with the airplane, severely damaging both engines. And that's key if it had just been one. You know, of course, it may have been a different story. Well, as the birds hit the plane, it felt like we were being pelted by heavy rain or hail. Now, that's a perfect word to use here, this word pelted, when you're talking about rain or hell. Uh, What does it mean, the word pelted, Manya? It means being striked, being hit. Mm -hmm. It's like, bam! Right. You know, I've been in the summertime back in the south of the United States. I'm from the state of Tennessee, and sometimes we will get hail. And if you're outside, they'll it'll be falling down and hitting you, and you would use that word. You're being pelted by hail. And so this is what how he describes it, how he felt. And how did it sound, Josh? Well, it sounded like the worst thunderstorm he'd ever heard. Mm, that's pretty intense. I'm sure he's heard many thunderstorms. Well, realizing that we were without engines, I knew that this was the worst aviation challenge I'd ever faced. And so he had faced many, I'm sure, but this was the worst. And how does he describe it, Manya? He said it was the most sickening pit of your stomach falling through the floor feeling. Yeah, I love that phrase, Josh, pit of your stomach. Mm. We don't hear that a lot. And listeners, you may be thinking, what in the world does that mean? What are we saying when we... We're talking about the pit of our stomach all of a sudden. Well, that's a really good question. So this is a, an expression that we used um, uh, when we say like we're feeling very afraid of something. But for me, it's a very physical feeling. Mm-hmm. So if you're falling, like hopefully you're falling in a planned way, like maybe on a roller coaster, on a big ride, you have this sensation in the center or the pit of your stomach, mm-hmm. which is pretty uncomfortable. When you know even that what you're doing is planned. But if it's something that's like happening as an accident, Mm. it is a terrible, terrible, scary feeling. Yeah, you just mentioned the roller coaster. That's exactly what I was thinking about. And that's part of the fun of a roller coaster. But you kind of know that ahead of time. But still, it feels like inside your stomach is kind of dropping or falling, right? And it's uh, not the best sensation, but it's kind of fun. But when you're going through something serious, that's a different story. Well, I think even on a roller coaster, it is not fun, (laughs) but especially when you don't plan anticipated. That's right. All right. So that's how he felt. We're going to get more details on exactly how he felt as he went through this situation. We have one more reading for day one here. So let's get into that. We're starting there in line 20. We're going to finish up day one. Solenberger experienced a rush of thoughts 
beginning with two that were rooted in disbelief. This can't be happening. This doesn't happen to me. Those thoughts were accompanied by what the pilot describes as a rush of adrenaline and a spike in blood pressure. In the following minutes, he and Skiles would need to make a series of quick decisions. There were countless factors to be weighed, with no time for extensive communication or detailed calculation. Emergency procedures that were designed to take minutes needed to be performed in seconds. All right. So as you can imagine, in this kind of situation, you're thinking a lot, right? A lot of the things are coming in, or maybe you're paralyzed. You feel like you can't think of anything. But in his in his case, he said he experienced a rush of thoughts, beginning with two that were rooted in disbelief, right? If, if rooted in something, that's that's kind of the the cause of it, right? And so it's rooted in disbelief. And what were those thoughts, Manya? He thought this can't be happening. And this doesn't happen to me. Why is he? Why do you think he's saying those things? Because the situation is so unbelievable.、Mm-hmm. He could not believe that something like that could happen to him. Right. He says this doesn't happen to me. Maybe he's thinking Josh about his years of experience, and he's been very successful, and is like, no, this this can't be on my record. And I, you know, I'm very experienced. I should know what to do. Sure, and we also talked here before about how his career has spanned decades, right? So he has had a lot of flying experience. He's been a lot of different situations, but nothing like this. Right, and so it's new to him. He had to think really quickly, and these thoughts they were accompanied by what the pilot describes as a rush of adrenaline, or sometimes we just say an adrenaline rush. What is an adrenaline rush? It is a surge of strength.、Mm-hmm. It's、um, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's just all of a sudden, maybe you're in a scary, uncomfortable situation, but you have the strength to overcome it. It's this sudden emotion. You feel very excited, or maybe stimulated, and maybe you have, it gives you kind of the ability to do something, right? And maybe you're in a race, for example, and you're really tired, but you have this rush of adrenaline. Maybe someone's passing you, and you're like, "No, I'm going to pass them," and you just kind of get this rush that pushes you past them. And sometimes we use it when we talk about extreme sports,、mm-hmm. right? So snowboarding when you're jumping off big jumps. Or uh, uh, parachuting or skydiving, so you get this like rush of emotion and energy that usually has to do with either being in danger or having something really extreme happen. Yeah, so you might be in danger, or you might just be excited. But if you are in danger, it prepares your body to react to that danger, and so that's what's happening here with Captain Sully. And so we also see that he had a spike in blood pressure while. I would think so, right? Yeah, <laughs> blood pressure would go up. The word spike just means it goes up temporarily and then it comes back down.、And、so that's what happened to him during this、uh, incident. Well, in the following minutes, he and Skiles would need to make a series of quick decisions. Now, this is scary, Josh. You're flying a plane and you have to make a series of quick decisions. You have to think clearly. And they describe the the next sentence says they were. Countless factors to be weighed. When we say countless, we just mean we can't count them. There's so many, right? Right. So countless is kind of like numerous, right?、Mm-hmm. There's so many that you really count, or the things you need to take into consideration. And here we also have to remember that this is happening while the plane was at about three thousand feet. So,、mm-hmm. if you've ever been on a plane, sometimes the pilot will come on the microphone and let you know when you've gotten to. Cruising altitude, right?、Mm-hmm. So that's the elevation above the ground that the plane will comfortably travel at, which is usually around thirty-five thousand feet,、mm-hmm. right? So three thousand feet is still really pretty close to the ground.、Mm-hmm. That's right, it is. And so they have to make some quick decisions, and there was no time for extensive communication. They couldn't call a meeting, right, and go、no. <laughs> take time out to discuss. So they just had to make these decisions very, very quickly. And、uh, there was no time for detailed calculation. They just had to do the best that they could. And what the last sentence talks about emergency procedures, Manya. Yes, it says that. Um, there are a lot of emergency procedures that, of course, the pilots have to learn about, and those procedures,、um, in order for them to be followed, it would take minutes,、um, but they only had seconds. Right. 
so they they didn't have basically any time to uh, go through information and, and go through the details. They just had to act. Right. So a lot of times when pilots are flying really complicated airplanes, like a commercial airliner, there's a, a whole list of procedures that come from the airline manufacturer that tells you what to do if problems happen. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times there's a, a checklist or a number of things that you have to do in order to try and solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Well, here they really didn't have time to go through even any of that because they lost both engines really close to the ground. That's right. And thank God there was an experienced pilot on this plane, right? Mm -hmm. If this happened to a newer pilot, it may have been a very different story. And we're going to learn more tomorrow and the next day about how Captain Sully, he really drew on his years of experience. And we're also going to talk more about emotional intelligence and how that played a huge part in all of this. And so we hope you stay tuned for that. We also hope that you will check out our Topic Talks videos. Just simply scan the QR code there at the top of page 34. Or go to our website, studioclassroom.com. You can view the videos there as well. We'd love to hear from you about this topic. Maybe you've been in a situation where you've had to practice uh, put into practice emotional intelligence, and we'd like to hear about it. Write into us at advanced at studioclassroom.com. That's advanced at studioclassroom.com. And you never know, maybe your feedback will end up on our feedback page in the magazine. Well, Manya and Josh, thanks for joining us for day one. Will you come back tomorrow? Yes. Definitely. All right. We look forward to that, and we hope all of you will join us for day two, and then we'll have a third day as well as we discuss Miracle on the Hudson Revisited. This is a psychology piece, and we hope that you are learning some things about yourself through hearing Captain Sully's story. You can learn a lot, and you can apply some of that to your own life and uh, use that in your own story. Well, join us again tomorrow as we continue our psychology article. Until then, this is Brandon. I'm Manya. And I'm Josh. Saying goodbye. Goodbye. goodbye.